Okay, it's quarter to four on the 4th of January 20. The, uh, virtually the lights just went out here. The, uh, with three, the, th the three o'clock or 1500 uh, top temperature of the day has only just passed. We've had a slight wind change and night has virtually fallen. And here's the reason why. Trying to get a fix on the breeze. Okay, it's coming up from the southeast. That means what we're experiencing here at Wyndham is the smoke of the Malakuta fires. Interestingly enough, it is cooling down. What we should prepare for now is the potential while this southeast blows correction. We're in the middle of shifting winds at the moment. Predominantly southeast. Just a little second ago there it swung to the northwest, believe it or not. Not a good sign in itself. It's still wait time, we've done the hurry up. This is a little sit, Facebook sit rep for family and friends who are inquiring as to our uh, situation here with the current wildfires throughout the southeast re region of uh, Australia. The first thing we'll point out is uh, the actual weather. It's eerie quiet. The uh, town's basically uh, vacated. Uh, it's quite pleasant, actually. The, the wind's lower than predicted, but it's, it's due to climb, and that's what we've got to be mainly concerned about. It will... It will climb to uh, steadily through the day and reach its peak at around 33, 34 kilometres per hour uh, midnight and then drop back off again. Now that wind is an important consideration for our disposition here at uh, Wyndham. Just going now to the, uh, the general weather specifically the temperature you can see at the moment we're looking at we're sitting on 26 degrees which is a little bit, bit below predicted it's predicted to reach 39 at 3 p.m now 39.7 that is at 3 p.m uh, and then it will start to drop off slowly now the problem here is that the forests in this area are going to be preheated and the oil's quite volatile at 40 degrees uh, so that's not going to help our situation at all, but there are other factors. As the temperature drops off, it goes down, and then it evens out over the next couple of days. That's all in our favour, but here is the problem. This, this hot spot here, pre-warm forests uh, with their volatile oils and uh, then dropping off. Coming back to the wind, you can see, so... At 3 p.m., we're, we're just we're looking at 9.7 from the east, uh, but then it starts to build, and uh, then it goes to the south southeast at 28, and that's bad news for us.
comes around and it goes to the south south west and then it hits the most dangerous period uh, it's a pure south westerly at uh, 33.1 kilometers that is when we're going to be under greatest threat and that's from that sighting there is at 11 o'clock or 2300 hours tonight uh, so our period is we've got a preheated forest here at 40 40 degrees then we run through and we get the winds coming picking it up now that is the potential for the fires racing away that are, are around us and uh, starting to in our case spot into here we're not in the direct line over the next 24 hours of any any major conflagration our problem will be uh, spot fires with uh, falling ash we're obviously like everyone in the area suffering uh, a lot of uh, ash fall it's uh, dead ash but once the live shrapnel starts falling that'll if it does that'll be in that period there so it's at this, uh, that period of 2400 hours that is our greatest threat and then the threat will start to ease off that depending on whether the southwest league kicks off a, uh, a firestorm and we start to get the pyro clouds uh, disrupting the weather patterns as has happened at Malakuta to our southeast of here. All right, I'll look first at the uh, the Victorian uh, fire maps. Um, here is Wyndham in New South Wales. When we when we look down at the Victorian fires, you can see that we've got this big front coming right through at us. This here is the Malakuta extension coming and it's ended into New South Wales at this time. Uh, these fronts here are, have been stable for the last couple of days, but when that southwesterly comes through, that's our biggest problem. It's going to lift it up and of course it's bringing it straight over the border. Uh, and here we are at Wyndham with our local fire, which is currently under control. Uh, uh, coming back down into Victoria, uh, we have a fire here at uh, Cooper Canberra uh, National Park, which is currently active as well. So that brings this front that little bit closer if, if a strong southwesterly gets in underneath this, which it will, and it will start to move it. So that could jump over. The Nungata fire just here is currently uh, under control. Uh, but, this one here at coming over the border from the Malakuta fires is active. Just bear that in mind. So that can all come across here. I'll now move to the New South Wales fire map. All right, that's the Malakuta fire in the corner here. If you can see it, just crossing the border into Timby uh, Billica and sitting there waiting for us. The, the Cooper Camber fire is just here in Victoria, which is active. This fire at Nungatta in New South Wales is currently under control, uh, just as the Wyndham fire is currently under control. This is Wyndham, and these are all the forests and parks to our southeast, southwest. Now, the wind is said is going to shift initially to the southeast with the heat, so it'll be it, it'll be trying to drive fires to the from the southeast. Uh, to the northwest, towards potentially towards these forests below Wyndham, uh, but as stated, it is the southwesterlies when they start, where particularly after the preheating, that are going to bring everything up uh, in a direction like this. Now these Victorian fires are highly unlikely to reach us tonight or tomorrow uh, under normal normal conditions with that southwesterly at thirty. Uh, kilometers so what we have here is uh, historically these fires that have come across here uh, have hit the Bondi forests and Nungatta and that uh, uh, as a member of the fire brigade myself I've been involved in uh, fighting these fires along, along the Imlay Road etc uh, and they have historically driven through now Perico Toowoomba that there is through forests and pine forests and what have you is a traditional fire lane. Uh, 
fires have often torn down there into, uh, across the river into the Nullica and what have you. Also, they've come from uh, the, the, the Goobra, which is this area here. Uh, they've actually jumped over the top of Burrigat, where I used to live, and uh, hit hit the uh, hit the Egan Peaks over here, which is Jingara Rock, and then torn off down through the Nullica and what have you towards Eden. So uh, us at Wyndham here, other than for the potential of uh, spot fires, etc., at this stage, uh, from uh, around midnight tonight. Uh, we're, we're pretty right at the moment, at, at least till tomorrow uh, afternoon night. But this, of course, is subject to uh, fire storms and uh, pyro clouds and, and, and disrupted weather, etc., uh, with their lightning and everything, which could set anything off anywhere, and, and then it's on for young and old. Uh, the other concern for us, of course, is... Uh, our property at Numbugger. Uh, at the moment, we've got a, a fire to the uh, the uh, southwest of uh, Puna, which is located just here. All this country has been burnt out in the past, but it is burning into that burnt country, and it's going to go through again. At the moment, it's predicted to stay up on the high ground, but uh, quite frankly, we've given up on 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 Puna Karumpra as a uh, those, this fire is going to go through because what you've got is this big one here which is very dangerous. It's the one that's taken out Cabargo and Quorma so far and is now threatening the whole coastline there. Uh, as you'd know, fires, once they're going like these are, they draw one another. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, canopy, brown canopy on uh, Punu. And it's just going to go through as a crown fire if it gets up, if it gets up. And a southwesterly is exactly what it needs. Uh, we 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 assess this because already burnt ground is reburning as it always will. It's a fallacy to think that where a fire has gone through, even with control burning, that fire won't go back through there. It does. Uh, people of Brogo here, if those fires draw each other, uh, they've got a problem. All these. The whole area is subject to um, uh, fight or flight orders at the moment with a recommendation that everyone pull down into the major centre of uh, Burga, and um, which is here where they've got the assets to cover. And the other major centre is uh, Eden where they'll have the assets available there. Uh, Marimbula is a also a uh, withdrawal area but uh, a smaller one compared to those other two. I'll now move to the projected uh, movement of these fires uh, through tonight. There's Eden, there's Booga, there's the Malakuta fire, here's the uh, fires that are bearing down on the coast uh, having passed through the Wad Billiger National Park behind uh, which Puni Karumpa is ad uh, adjacent and uh, taken out the uh, a couple of villages and threatening the coast. We are located just here. Now the black is the current burnt out areas. Uh, the solid red is the predicted movement of the fire, which will occur overnight, the uh, the hatched area is the potential with spot fires, etc. So it's not going to be a fun night. Okay, Malakuta, of course, is now going to move into Australia. It's it's uh, there in the Ben Boyd National Park and uh, threatening one boy. You can see the red there. This is the mountains here. They're in real trouble up there. Uh, that's Jindabyne there, Adam Yidibi. This area is in trouble. Now, the biggest disaster area on the coast here is Naruma, Bermagui. Uh, the people have been pulling out of there and heading for Buga uh, for safety. And you can see the red is just going to flood the coast. Here is uh, the other fire. And, of course, Punu is located there. 
so there you go. But we're here. So once this southwesterly, which most of, it's northeasterly this morning, so it's particularly up in the mountains, you can see the winds are going to get up and spot fire and spread the fire to the to the uh, the, the southwest. But uh, because of these northeasterlies, but uh, once it switches around to the southwest, it's going to jump, and these two will draw each other, just as these two will draw each other. But in the meantime, the southwesterly just it's only a hop and a jump and it takes out that whole coast area. So potentially you're looking at another Malakuta down here where anyone in there is gonna be in the ocean or if not already in Bega. And that's our disposition at the moment, but we sit here. Now, unless it's a major conflagration tonight, it's not gonna to get to us. Uh, that is why We've opted to stay with the uh, the flight fight. We're 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 adopting fight. We we will deal with um, spot fires, uh, but if we're getting one of these major conflagrations coming down on us, we're prepared and ready to uh, to run. Okay, it's been a long night. It's currently uh, 0830 hours, 830 in the morning uh, here at Wyndham. As you can see, we're shrouded. What amazes is we have power. Moving outside. Did regular patrol through the night on our little lot. We have only experienced smoke and ash. A few birds calling, trying to make sense of it. Yesterday we had uh, Birds coming down for any water in the yard, uh, just panting. Uh, we had uh, the king uh, parrots actually sitting on the veranda here with us walking straight past them. The village about us is uh, very quiet on account of there's very few of us left here. Sulphur crested cockatoo, of course, is uh, screaming out every now and again to let us know they're still there. While wild king parrots and uh, us within, uh, well, at one stage I just reached out and touched one on the beat to say hello. The smoke and the, uh, the darkness as it is here at the moment you can only imagine what was going through that sentient mind. The thing about our circumstance at the moment here at Wyndham is um, we're most fortunate. Most fortunate. And I'll say it again, we've got power. And talking of king parrots, uh, here of course is the uh, yellow crested Lorraine in full kit. She's dressed up in my old Burrigate Bushfire Brigade overall. And here she is in full view for the yellow crested Lorrainist Fabulous. The actual fire sit rep part of this little video is uh, dated uh, 05 1500 hours or three o'clock in the afternoon and uh, as accurate as I can make it at that date uh, and this little sit rep is specific to our disposition at Wyndham there there are a lot of uh, 
rumours and uh, other nonsense being spread about at the moment. I don't wish to be part of it. We'll first look at the Victorian uh, fire map. You can see from the earlier videos that uh, the Victorian fires have in fact creeped up and uh, passed over the border in uh, several places. Up through here, the, uh, the Coop, Cupra Canberra uh, fire that worried me just here, which was just a little fire in front of this main fire front, and at the time you just had the Malakuta fire. These fires, as they're burnt in the New South Wales, uh, at the moment have been coined the border fires from a New South Wales perspective. Okay, here they are as they currently stand. This, this map's just been updated in New South Wales. The fire has gone right through last night and is now threatening Eden. It's, 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 a, it's gone through Kaya. Uh, Wanboyne's been hit with this arm here. Uh, this is all Heath country in here, whereas this is all forestry. This is Mount Imlay here. All of this is uh, state forest. It's gone around the back of the Imlay Park, taken the Imlay, Mount Imlay Park out and, and come th up the forest to the east. It's, got, it's crossed the Toowoomba River. It's taken places such as Kaya and what have you out. Meanwhile, the Cooper, Cooper Canberra fire that I was most concerned about uh, yesterday has crossed and it's coming up in this arm here. I'm assuming and that it is classified with this one as uh, the border fire. Now the problem for us here at Wyndham, right here, is that these fires have entered into historical Perico Toowoomba uh, wildfire corridor. That's down through there. Now, when it comes to fighting fires, I've personally fought these fires along here. This is a historical thing. It's written into the early, the, uh, the history of this area. It is a known fire corridor. The fires come down through here. The Wog River runs up there. They have traditionally come across the border and torn through here to Nullica. Our problem with this is, as it goes through, if we were now at Wyndham here to get a, a strong south uh, easterly in a in in a few days with a with a bit of warmth that's going to take that long fire front and blow it straight back up at us at Wyndham. Twenty hundred hours on the tenth of uh, January, twenty twenty. That is eight o'clock. The winds were predicted to uh, swing from a northeasterly to a southerly at precisely this time. Under the northeasterly, we had the uh, the smoke from what is now called the border fire kept south of us, and um, we've had clear air. Things have almost instantly changed. We've been waiting for this all day, and we've been preparing. The fires, of course, are a lot closer now. And this southern is going to blow them straight at us. The real problems with the southeast fires at the moment, of course, are up in the mountains. 
they're in real trouble at the moment and they're going to get lots stronger winds than we are. This is the uh, RFS potential fire spread map for what we're potentially facing tonight with the uh, expected uh, southerly conditions to blow through. Over the last couple of days we've had a, a gentle northeasterly winds coming through which has had the effect of uh, forcing the fire back on itself uh, and slowing its course. It has been constantly creeping forward down the onto the Egan uh, Peaks ridge line and towards uh, Jingle Rock just here. Wyndham is located here so uh, south easterlies to south westerlies pose risk for the uh, the Egan Peaks run if it gets under it and takes off. Uh, it has also been gradually uh, creeping up into the Coolangubra uh, over the and, and joined up with a neighbouring fire to become a so-called mega fire there. Toowoomba Village is located there, is currently roughly two kilometres uh, clear of the, uh, the fire front, uh, creeping up on it. Uh, Burrigate is located here. They're obviously going to become under direct threat if this spread continues the way it's going. Um, and of course, if it gets to here, uh, the fire gets through the Coolangoober and gets around and above Burrigate. Uh, it also has, with the southwest, the potential of spotting over to the Eagle Peaks, which is an historical occurrence. And uh, of course, it will then start to burn and, and draw this. They'll draw each other and sit there. But it, historically, also, the potential under a southwesterly once the fire is there, or a southeasterly once the fire is there, is to get up onto this country here, which is uh, known as Little Jingara Peaks, which will bring it right through to above uh, the village of Wyndham located here. So you can see the potential for Wyndham, uh, and in view of that potential, we might only sit and wait this night out. There's my neighbour wetting down, what a man. Wetting down everything, mate. Wetting down the wet pile down there for you. I think. All the way down there. I've left Tony's water on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the hose down. No, look, the orange goes out of the night. That's why I've got orange nozzle. No, mate. It's got to be. I've, been inside, it's I've, I've been inside, it's green now, not orange. I have. And what you've had a tub and everything. I've washed the bod, mate. Should I hose him down? I've done the pile next to your house, Lorraine. Thank you. He's the, uh, 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 he does, he's health and safety. He's our western front. Won't first. let me on the roof when it's wet because I'm old. Our western front, uh, <laughs> first line. <laughs> So uh, today we've uh, rigged up the five horsepower firefighting pump in readiness to our 5,000 gallon tank. It's functioning well. I just teed it in here in front of the pressure pump to the house. It's working quite well. Of course, we've robbed Peter to pay Paul here. We've taken it from the property at uh, Numbugger. But we can only look after one place at a time. All gutters are again full. If the fire comes in, we do have a couple of hot spots. Uh, for example, I bought all the leaf litter in and uh, put it down on the vegetable garden. Uh, if the fire is threatening, I can put on the overhead sprinkle system and wet it down. But the fact is, there was that much of it. 
and it's building again already. Uh, it was better to put it in one spot where it can be dampened for at least a while while we go uh, to try and hold any fire getting in there at bay. So, unlike Saturday night, I've got the neighbour on the western flank. There's a neighbour at two up on the uh, eastern flank. In the back lane. There you go. That bloody neighbour of mine just threw a lemon at me. <laughs> well, you're a lemon head. I'm a lemon. This is the back lane. Now, for those in living in the city and that our age, this was what was uh, originally put in and planned as the Dunny Carter's Lane. The Dunny Lane. So, yeah, you shit into a can. And once a week, the dunny man came and collected the can. Full or half full? It mattered not. No. And make sure you left a dozen long bottles of beer oh, oh. for pickup every Christmas and major holiday. Very cool, very cool. That way they didn't drop it so often in the driveway as they walked down. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, we've done what we can. Now we sit it out. Zero eight hundred hours, Saturday the 11th. It was an interesting night. The high country has copped a hammering, that is, up in the uh, snowy mountains as we call them. They're actually hills. We don't have mountains in Australia. It was a long night. We just sat here and monitored well, actually, I lay down and monitored. Took the odd patrol around the yard and uh, after the southerly change had blown through, it's now southwesterly, and we settled down to uh, calmer conditions like we have now. A little bit of rain fell, probably uh, less than a millimetre anyway, uh, but we had moisture in the air and uh, uh, our humidity was up around 70%. It all helped. I finally uh, closed the house down and locked up and went to bed at uh, to sleep, that is, at uh, 0.130, as the danger period had clearly passed for us here at Wyndham. Not for so many others. The devastation can only be described as horrific. sun not so red smoke still throughout the valley with a gentle northeasterly breeze coming through we cleaned this whole area up the other day a little bit of heat and down comes this ribbon bark on just that single Managum, Eucalyptus viminalis, little bit of heat, it 
rolls its bark up and drops it. Question is, what to do with it? The other day we carted it off and put it in the uh, one of the local tips for composting, but uh, that's not on at the moment. We're not budging. Important tree of Viminalis. It's got a relatively high sugar content in the leaves, and it's a vital food source for such as koala and various of the gliders, that is the possum gliders, throughout Australia. Great to say the koala in this area is basically no longer. the 14th of January 2020, 1800 hours. I don't know whether you can hear it with this little camera, but we've had what we're presuming are the retardant dropping aircraft doing passes backwards and forwards up the coast. It's the first time we've had these aircraft, to our knowledge, working this area. Gone north, probably dropped their load by now. As per this posting here on uh, our Facebook news feed that the RFS were going to put down retardant lines to hopefully block the uh, the border fire encroaching on uh, both uh, Toowoomba and uh, Burry it to our immediate south here at Wyndham. We heard the aircraft in the smoke go overhead, presumably to position themselves for their runs. And apparently the mission was uh, a success. First time we've had aircraft in the area since these fires started. Uh, good to see the assets finally being freed enough to start helping the outlying areas from where they have been preoccupied to date. It's the 15th of January 2020. Seeing as how I've gone this far, bringing the firefighting pump over, I've made a little pad for it there, or I'm in the process of doing it. Just a matter of finishing it off now, but hopefully it's for nothing. And we get some of this rain that's about tomorrow for New South Wales as well. Mainly up north of us, even though it's raining in Victoria at the moment. A lot of people don't realise it, but uh, the Beaker Valley itself is dry land farming. Even though it's dairy, it's dry land farming. People hear dairy and think that it must be wet country right up at Kiama Shellhaven district. It's not, it's basically a rain shadow to Kosciuszko and the other hills behind us to our west. And talking of that sort of thing, the rain birds were in here this morning. That is the yellow tailed black cockatoo. The old timers call them the rain birds. And it often works. When they come in from the bush and hang about squealing their heads off like something out of uh, the Jurassic, to my imagination, it often does rain. The old timers told me this when I first moved down here. I made a point of talking to them before they died the rainbirds, because I look for the logic. That was king, the king parrots that just flew over. I look for the logic. Haven't really found anything yet. Another old tale, another old folk tale. The black ants are on the move. 
everywhere through this herb garden here or what was a herb garden before the drought killed it and we ran it short on water and let it go and they're running around inside the house now that was one of my mother's favorite tales the black ants start going entering the house setting up their trails train trails rain laugh at it but the first Australians the first nation peoples will tell you similar things and all I can say to my European brethren better to listen there'll be science in it Last night we had no more than two millimetres of rain here. Love to see it, but down in the greater Melbourne area they had readings of 20, 25 mils. Up in Sydney it's raining on the coast here. Two millimetres seems to have been about the, the best of it. East Gippsland missed out on that Victorian rain as well. So the areas of the uh, so termed border fire and the Wirriberry fire up at our property have had no rain on them. Good news is that the the two millimetres, of course, is moisture. This morning was very humid. Uh, it's quite cool now, so the humidity's dropped right off. But we need that moisture. We need it in the air. Now, it is true that it hinders burn back operations try and set up a boundary around these fires but that boundary is humongous anyway and the truth is it's going to take heavy prolonged rain to get it out we need at least 50 mil put on top of these fires to even have a chance of getting at them so I'm not worried here at Wyndham about the moisture, a little bit of moisture because it helps our situation. And you have to remember, our circumstance was if we chose to stay, it was made very clear to us that we're on our own. In the centres, the RFS and other services were there to initially protect life and then to consider protecting assets couldn't agree more we chose to stay here but it was made very clear to us also that we're on our own as I've said I accept this there was a little bit of nonsense went on with it as is normal in the confusion of these things but I accepted the fact that we're on our own. So a little bit of moisture in the air is nothing but good news for us located here in the village of Wyndham. Wyndham, 17th January, 2020, 10 hours. It is steadily mizzling a squadron of yellow-crested cockatoos were here earlier going crazy as they tend to do when they start to get rain hanging off wires upside down getting the water under the wings and having a good tub making total clowns of themselves meanwhile two galahs sit there preening all enjoying the weather what accidentally flew directly at me and the camera then if it picked it up was a uh, 
crimson rosella and yes because of the drought we've broken a golden rule of our own and we're actually putting a little bit of feed out for these birds at the moment the seed eaters that is because uh, they were hungry they were doing it tough so we're putting a bit of seed out with their water the two magpies there were actually it's raining but they're still coming to the uh, fresh water sitting on the top of the fence there we're not getting the heavy rain that they're getting around Greater Melbourne and north of us here uh, we're going to have to wait this is wonderful it's not going to put the fires out but with the passing of each day our circumstance improves geometrically the fire at least has been slowed down and being suppressed and they might be able to get a few more lines in to block it you can see here that uh, and probably hear water running from the gutter on their veranda roof and dripping away here I've still got all the gutters blocked A because I didn't want to refill them if we got in trouble only top them up B because they're full of uh, ash and soot there's at least a 10 millimeter layer collected along the full length of the gutters do not want it in our drinking water so uh, once the fires are gone I'm gonna have to disconnect everything from our water tanks and uh, give them a good flush out and there's so much ash and soot up there that uh, health wise it would be quite concerning g'day guys don't take oh well they are wild after all and not pets and of course once conditions uh, improve for them we stop feeding immediately but we've always left fresh water out for them it may not be heavy rain it may not be the rain we need to put the border fire and uh, the, the Werry Berry fire out at the property at Punu. But it's wet. Who knows? We may soon be able to store the emergency fire kit away for another day. 1500 hours. Stop mizzling. They're actually reporting areas of flooding in Victoria and predicted heavy rains for uh, further up on the north coast of New South Wales. Nothing for us in the southeast of uh, New South Wales at the moment, just as there is nothing for uh, East Gippsland in Victoria from where the border fires came up into us as I said the other day I think we need two inches here just to give us a chance to get on top of these uh, so-called mega fires as they're now being termed but really what we need is probably more like four to five inches to uh, put the wildfires to a state of blackout pump has its own little slab now and uh, is rolled up hopefully not to be needed and this is where we teed the intake for the pump in unfortunately as it is with these things interfering with the pump that's been there for about 10 years it broke down so we had to get a brand new pressure pump for the house but all done now also just been around the three roofs 
cleaning the uh, ash and soot out of the gutters. It's only been uh, a week at its most and uh, the water was putrid. The smell was particularly bad and uh, where I've opened the the YouTube system to catch the water into the major tank here and you can see it looks like it's bought out oil <laughs> Uh, 20th of uh, January 2020 just getting a bit of extra rope from the shed brought down the our garbage trailer and loaded it up with the candle bark and other refuse that's fallen from the sky upon us we're going to run it down to the Marimbula tip and uh, they'll compost it down there. Very hot and humid today. Predicted thunderstorms from around 1500 on. And we can hear them actually rumbling around us to the south, west and southeast at the moment. The occasional drop. Let's hope it drops. A lot of rain on the fire front to the south of us here. We've just dumped our load at uh, the Marimbula tip. And the skies have opened. This is the airport. All the choppers are grounded. They're everywhere. Uh, of course, this is no guarantee that we've got rain at Wyndham, let alone on the fire grounds. We shall see as we head west. But Marimula is smiling at the moment. Of course, when I say I hope it falls on the fire grounds, I mean it, but this is exactly the sort of rain we didn't need. We need a gentle rain, a steady rain, not a popping it, not some cells dumping a load like this. Erosion, erosion, erosion. Bambula, the eagle in its nest. The storm cell's gone into general rain now. They're still floating around, we can hear the thunder occasionally. We've been sitting it out here at Pambler under the Eagle. Received a phone call from uh, my daughter in Canberra. She's an executive officer with resources up there. They've had a major cell come straight over the top of them. Um, dumping a huge load of hail which has taken out windows and everything. So they've been all told to go home. The office is a mess. Went to a car and it's a complete ride off with the hail. The hail was so heavy and bad. Uh, one of the lumps even punc punctured a hole straight through one of the metal panels on the vehicle. It's a total ride off, been towed away. Poor bugger. I mean, you repair it. You can't help but bleed. What we'll do now is we'll drive out to see what happened at Wyndham. We've had another phone call from Eden from a friend advising us that uh, this rain and storm has hit them and it came from their west, which may be an indicator, which is out to where Wyndham is, may be an indication that rain has fallen on the major border fire ground that's so concerning us at this time. We've arrived back at Wyndham to find that we've had 13.6 millimetres of rain and uh, a quick look at radar and what have you. 
establishes that the uh, the cell that dropped the hail and rode off my daughter's vehicle is the cell that actually drifted down to the coast area. Uh, Marimbula was more on the edge and we've been on the very edge of it. Nonetheless, 13.6 millimetres. Every little bit helps. Thankful for the rain, but it's not over. As near as we can work out by going around the different villages, it, it seems fairly consistent for the uh, Toowoomba Valley. You've got uh, here at Burrigate, you've had uh, 13.6 millimetres with this latest rainfall. Up here at Rocky Hall, you've had 13.6. Wyndham here, we've had 13.6. When we move to the higher ground and uh, into the black area of the fires, as best we can do is, we're looking at nine millimetres in the few areas we've been able to check there. So the fire ground has only received nine millimetres from this latest group of uh, cells that uh, moved through and dropped their load. These little red dots, as of the 19th, that's yesterday afternoon, that was the active fire front at that time. Now this rain would have suppressed these fires a little. We noted earlier that all the choppers and everything, everything's grounded at Marimbula at the moment. Um, people are relaxing as though it's all over, it is not. I'm remaining on stand too, they can stand down if they wish. With all these little areas still burning and you'll notice they're all creeping, they're creeping, they're little arms off the main blackened area of the fire and uh, all it needs is for more fire weather, particularly with the south westerly and they're up and gone again and they'll shoot through the Coolangoover as I have personally experienced in the past. Egan Peaks, it'll go up like a rocket too. It's now uh, 1900 hours uh, we've got another couple of cells moving towards us uh, this one here is of concern there's Wyndham right there and uh, this cell here is this one coming through here it's currently to our north we can see it and this one here is a worry and of course it's got a it's quite powerful in the centre there, so that cell is going to pass at the moment on its current trajectory, either directly over or just to the north of Wyndham. We've just covered everything up in anticipation of uh, the potential for hail in that lot just there. Hopefully there's more rain in it. You can see this area here, that's going, if you look here, away from the cell at the rain associated with it that is going to pass from the northwest to the south uh, east directly over the active part of the current uh, border fire so let's hope there's a bit of rain in that for the fire uh, and enough to put it out with any luck but that's highly unlikely but let's hope all this rain here hits the fire ground and that cell skips through just to the north of us. It does look like it's breaking down a little bit of the further east it comes. passing over us at the moment <clears throat> bit of thunder 
not as severe as I thought it might have been. We'll take this. Good rain for us. Let's hope it's up on the fire ground. 